We are here to announce the examination and our deep satisfaction of the Universal Periodic Review of the United States of America, the, U the Universal Periodic Review being the examination of the human rights record of the United States of America. This is very important for us, Indigenous Peoples and Nations Coalition and the Kwani Foundation. We have just received a recommendation from Pakistan after submitting our shadow report, which was very difficult. Uh, the, the re that resulted in paragraph 86, which stated that Alaska and Hawaii are a state of peoples recognized under the law of nations and international laws nations and that we claim self-determination and self-governance. According to the, our report, the U.S. submitted misleading uh, reports to cloak the violations of the Charter of the United Nations and international law. Now, Pakistan made the recommendation on Monday the 11th calling upon the United States to respond to the suggestion made by the United Nations Special Rapporteur in paragraph 69N of document A68284 regarding the cases of Alaska, Hawaii, and the Dakotas. In the draft report, which was just adopted today, this afternoon on the 15th of May, we are pleased to say that we made it in the report and 69N calls upon the United States of America to accept that Alaska and Hawaii and the Dakotas are received by the United Nations Decolonization Committee uh, communications so that we can have our cases reviewed and with the view of and hope that Alaska and Hawaii are re-enlisted to the list of non-self-governing territories. Okay, um, I'd like to give a little bit of background about what uh, we're talking about. Uh, Hawaii and Alaska contend that we never became part of the United States, and we actually have a very strong legal basis inter under international law to claim that, that Hawaii was, and Alaska were never acquired either lawfully or any other way by the United States, and that we actually have the right to self-determination as nations and peoples. And uh, so this is why we are here at the United Nations and have been for the last number of years to uh, tell our story and to, to talk to people about our situation. And we are here uh, basically in order to reclaim our nations as sovereign and independent nations. So this is why this has been, was an important um, uh, uh, occurrence uh, this last few days in the, uh, the Universal Periodic Review of the United States in which we were able to uh, have one country, Pakistan, at least acknowledge that we have a basis in international law uh, to, to uh, pursue our claims that we are, a sov we are sovereign nations. And in doing so, this uh, elevates our position and our, um, our uh, endeavors into a different level in that we can now uh, talk to others as well as to other states as well as United Nations mechanisms uh, on the basis that we have an international case here or we have international situations and that we are not only bound by domestic law and that the United States has been trying to uh, foist upon us to try to push us into. Um, the United States, of course, has made this claim that we are part of the United States. But again, as I said earlier, uh, this is a false claim and we can prove that, that the United States, again, never did acquire or never did uh, uh, get control of, of the Hawaiian Kingdom or of uh, Alaska. And so we are very pleased with the outcome of this uh, periodic review. Uh, and the outcome basically says that we have the right to pursue uh, autonomy or independence, uh, a sovereign independence as nations, not necessarily as a domestic uh, people of, of a, a larger country. Okay, um, thank you, Leon. This is vitally important for our peoples 
in Alaska. What many people don't realize is that there is, in fact, a history that has never been truthfully told about Alaska. Of course, many think that Alaska was sold from the monarchy of Russia in the 19th century to the United States of America. In fact, there are some United Nations reports that say that the United States of America received neither title or jurisdiction to Alaska. There has to be a basis behind this. And this goes back to the uh, when they were deliberating the 1903 Boundary Tribunal, what we did is we got a lawyer, a land title expert, to explain to us why, under the law of nations at the time, this transaction was not legal. And basically, the monarchy of Russia sat on the islands of Kodiak and Sitka, and in order under the law of nations to acquire possession of that vast quarter of the globe, they would had to have been sitting on the continent. So United States of America Secretary of State John Quincy Adams stated that unless you're sitting on the uh, continent, you cannot claim to have acquired possession. So this was backed by Great Britain which resulted in, of course, that uh, Alaska, as well as Hawaii, because of their status as a sovereign nation, uh, overthrown by the United States in 1893, we were both put under General Assembly Resolution 66I in 1946, which places us on the list under Chapter 11 of the Charter of United Nations under Article 73 of the Charter. This is very significant because as a state of peoples, we have the right to consent and to know what our status is, to be able to know and speak on the matter in our languages, and to study the case and situation so that we know the consequence of our vote. So in, in very simple terms, the level of consent for a state of peoples is higher than just consultation by a state who is supposed to come and administer or to ask peoples what they desire within a state. We are actually considered separate and distinct, and until we cede that status, we have the right to continue to assert this right, and this is the claim, the important claim that we made, which was reflected in the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, United Nations documentation, which was submitted to the United Nations uh, Universal Periodic Review for the examination of the United States of America record. So uh, since this was put to the table, we believe that this places us in a higher plane, a higher level of recognition in which the United States must deal under international law because the question was respond to the suggestion. When the United States responded, they did not respond to our status as a state of peoples who are recognized under international law. They attempted to sidestep or equivocate on the question and reduce us to domestic law, which we never have acceded to. So I think in our case, we are asserting that our status remains intact and that our rights as state of peoples, we have the right to go to the United Nations Decolonization Committee as is recommended in, by Alfred Desaius in his report in October of 2013 to the General Assembly uh, in 69N to have our situation, our, both of our cases examined. Included in this is the situation of the Dakotas, which is uh, the great Sioux Nation, the Lakota, Nakota, and Dakotas. So this is very significant in that we are states of peoples who should be able to go and uh, uh, participate in a referendum, exercise our right to self-determination without any form of coercion from the United States of America. And if we so choose, to be an independent state, to be neutral between uh, the Russian Federation and Canada and the United States, and to enjoy 
the exp our to decide whether or not how we want to uh, exploit our resources and how and to govern our land and our territory. This is vitally important for us. Thank you. A little bit more background about Hawaii. As, as I said, most people today think that Hawaii is part of the United States. Actually, most people don't realize that Hawaii was actually a sovereign recognized nation, uh, particularly during the 19th century when we were recognized by all the great powers of the world, had treaties with them, and actually had diplomatic legations, over 90 of them all over the world, trade legations as well as uh, diplomatic legations. So we are actually a sovereign nation already, and we're, we have determined, and as well, international law actually recognizes us as a nation in continuity. So despite the fact that the United States has imposed itself upon our nation, we still are a sovereign nation. It's just that we are not allowed to function as such because of the intrusion by the United States. So what we are looking for right now is for the United, for the United Nations to point out to the, of the fact uh, that the Hawaiian Kingdom is still a sovereign nation, and that the United States has violated its own obligations under international law by occupying our nation, and that this illegal occupation needs to stop. We don't want to uh, go into any kind of uh, uh, conflict over this. What we want to do is to have the United States and the United Nations assist in, in a peaceful resolution to this particular situation in that so that we can all uh, abide as peaceful as and as as well-meaning people and nations uh, toward each other so uh, the Hawaiian Kingdom is looking toward the international community for support in resolving this situation with the United States in as peaceful and as orderly a manner as possible and that we would all remain friendly nations toward each other as our treaties call upon us to do. Um, thank you, Leon. To further explain what we would expect in this process, for instance, when you look at the case of um, the Greeks after the Nazi occupation in World War II, they helped to set the standard for what is a legal entity who has the right to represent the peoples. Um, and so what happened was they sent some of their leaders in exile, but the Nazis in their occupation made agreements with some of the Greek uh, peoples there. But since they went in and created these institutions, it's what you would, uh, as it says in the Greek settlement, called a, be, being called a puppet government, has no legitimacy in, under international law to make uh, agreements that are upheld after the occupation. So when you look at Article 73, the, this is reflected in Article 73D pertaining to free political institutions. To give you an example with the cases of Tunisia and Morocco, when the French went in there and they set up institutions that were erected by the French government, these were not recognized as legal entities who could assist in administering the Moroccan or the Tunisian peoples in their effort to exercise their right to self-determination. The General Assembly said, no, we cannot accept this. Not only that, only the Tunisians can vote. Only the Moroccans can vote. Those French citizens living in the territory, this is not your territory. Therefore, you cannot vote to determine what your status or level of relationship is going to be with France or any country of the world. So this is what we expect in Alaska. One of the serious violations that we experienced in Alaska was the United States military voted. Not only that, they had created a federal law which was a literally literacy test for voters that said we were subject to $500 fine, six months in jail or both, if we could not read or write 10 lines of the United States Constitution. 
And in some cases, if we persisted or if we were allowed to vote, we were then uh, subject to $500 fine, six months in jail, or both. So these are among the serious violations of what you call the factors and principles. And if you look at these violations, they are a violation of the sacred trust responsibility that is, it reads in Article 73A. So we continue to assert that these serious violations cannot be upheld and therefore United States of America cannot continue to assert that they have legitimately uh, annexed Alaska as a result of the vote of the US military and its citizens in Alaska. Thank you. So what we have done in Hawaii in the last uh, 20, 30 years is that we've come to self-identify. We've come to realize who we really are and then uh, doing so, come to also realize that if we don't do something about it, then no one else is going to. And so we've begun to assert our sovereignty and assert our right to self-determination and assert our independence. So we have actually set up a government that will uh, continue to use the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom and, and to, uh, to uh, uh, use these laws to conduct our lives as well as our, our society. Um, and so we do have a movement in Hawaii that is uh, like a shadow or parallel government that is actually reflecting the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom and not the laws of the occupier United States. Uh, and this has been a good uh, experience for us because it, it, it is allowing us to differentiate between jurisdictions. The United States claims a jurisdiction which we say is an illegal jurisdiction and then we are exercising our jurisdiction under our own laws which we believe are lawful uh, jurisdiction. And uh, this creates a, uh, a, a dichotomy of sorts that is the United States is trying to maintain its, its uh, position and we are fast uh, challenging that position and saying that they have no authority in the, you know, in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Um, it has been a very interesting experience because what we find is that uh, as people begin to understand or learn about our situation, we're finding many people are beginning to support uh, our, our uh, endeavor to restore our nation. And uh, this is now going worldwide. And one of the benefits of being able to speak on a program like, to, like this is that we get to educate more people about the truth of what happened in Alaska and in Hawaii uh, and, and to uh, ask for your support. And, and that support could just mean just understanding and not going along with the falsified record or the falsified uh, version that the United States presents. And again, what we're looking for is a resolution to this uh, great uh, violation and, and this great um, offense that has occurred to Alaska and Hawaii. We want to resolve it so that we can move forward with peace and with unity and with, uh, in Hawaii we, say, we use the word aloha, and that is caring for one another and moving together in harmony and, and in unity. So as we move forward, what do we expect and what could we hope for? When you look at the recommendation, it says to respond to the su suggestion. So if we were to get the United States of America to respond to the, the suggestion, we would hope that United States of America would accept that the United Nations decolonization committee, the General Assembly, receive communications and that they freely examine the case and the situation of both Alaska and Hawaii to determine whether or not, not only if the referendum was legal, or to also examine the report to see if there were serious flaws or violations of the factors and principles which were laid out in General Assembly resolutions that draw the criteria from which they would determine whether or not 
we had legitimately consented to being part or, uh, of or annexed into United States of America. This is important because what was reflected in paragraph 86 of the summary, it's, we, we make the claim that the United States submitted misleading reports to cloak the violations of the Charter of United Nations and International Law. When you look at a book called The United Nations and Its Colonies by Mr. Hassan, he states that the situations of Alaska and Hawaii were never properly examined. Now, why do we say Alaska and Hawaii? Because when they removed Alaska and Hawaii, it was under the same General Assembly Resolution 1469 on the 12th of December, 1959. So without proper examination of either Alaska, Hawaii, the status of Hawaii as an occupied uh, sovereign nation or the status of Alaska as an occupied sovereign peoples who have the legitimate right to our territory and resources, well, we assert that we still have this right and that there is no legitimate title, there is no legitimate dominion or exercise of sovereignty over us. So that is what we're trying to correct. We're here to gain support, not only from the member states of the United Nations, but from the international community, down to the peoples at the household level. We would like you to learn about our case and to support us in our activity so that we can achieve what we believe is a, a just uh, pursuit uh, for the violations that were committed by the United States of America. I want to thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you and say aloha, and we will see you again sometime soon, hopefully. Aloha. Okay, and thank you very much. Uh, so I give you greetings from Alaska and to all of our peoples out there who have supported us. We thank you very much. We especially thank Pakistan for your courage because it takes a lot of courage just to pose a question about the illegal status of Alaska and Hawaii, which in essence is what happened. So we thank you very much and uh, God bless you.